Hello everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines. We're working on uh, Arians STX24. Right now we're shooting the uh, pliers that you may need, needle nose pliers you may need, 9 16 wrench, half inch wrench, 3 8 ratchet, quarter inch ratchet. We're going to use a half inch drive, quarter inch socket, 3 8 drive, 9 16 with an extension. Uh, and I'm also going to use a quarter inch 9 16 because I like to use my electric ratcheting tool. Alright, so this is most likely what we're going to need to perform replacing two belts on a Arian snow thrower. It's an ST824. It's 8 horsepower, 24 inch cut. It's got a auger belt, which is the thicker one here. Auger belts in the front. And also the transmission drive belt, which is a 3 8 drive here. I would recommend definitely going OEM. Just order them online. There's a couple uh, part numbers here. So if you guys snap this, take these part numbers. The 0720-8600, that is a uh, auger belt. And then the transmission drive belt is a 0720-6600. The only thing different about these sometimes is that you do have to go by your serial number on your machine to get the correct one. Sometimes they have a serial number break. And where you find a model number and a serial number are on the back. It should say Arians, and they'll have a model number here and the serial number. You need those two numbers to correctly identify your belts for the proper machine. There's a couple machines out there that the serial numbers are just a hair off and the belts are a little bit longer or shorter, so you just gotta be careful there. Today I'm gonna show you how to take apart the auger itself in the front here. We're going to disassemble this so we can get to these belts and replace them. So with the 9 16ths, we're going to use a 9 16ths here. That'll take off the one bolt that'll actually help separate this. There's a bolt on the other side. We also have to take this off. You can do it a couple different ways. You can pull a pin here to take this off, but you have to slide this out when you slide this off, and I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to take it apart here at these, at the little worm gear that attaches. So when you put this back together again, you have to adjust your uh, worm gear to this so you don't have a too, too tight of a gap or too big of a gap. It's got to be just about perfect for you, and you can realign that once you get it back together again. So I'm going to take this off. It's a half inch. Not on mine. A lot of these will be different. This is just a half inch and it's a care bolt. So we're gonna take this nut off. It has a washer on the bottom of it. And this has got a lock washer. And there's another one that's stuck to it, but I usually tend to put them back on to each other so you don't lose them. And you can just put this off to the side for now. All right, so that gets rid of that. Then we want to split this, so we're going to take this 9 16 bolt off here, and there's one on the other side. I use a quarter inch with a little bit of help. By a power tool. Now, you got to be careful when you split the other side. This is going to want to fall apart on you. And you have to have, at the handles, what I've done here is I'm going to use my lift. Bring it up just about to the handles. You can put this against the wall. You may have to have two people help you to hold this up so it doesn't fall in half. Come around to the other side. And I'm gonna hold up on the handles so I actually have tension. So it'll make it easier for this bolt to come out. Okay, so my left arm is actually holding this machine up. So what I'm gonna do now is let it down. This is gonna split away. Now these belts are attached. Sometimes there's a break that's down inside all the way down to bottom and you have to engage you have to engage the auger itself to disengage the brake down there so you can get the belt off but what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to creep this belt around the back side of this and while I put my lift down it's going to split these it's going to let this come apart a little bit easier So you got to get your belt off the back side and you can have somebody help you do this as far as getting this split apart. Now it's getting hung up on our brake. 
So what I'm gonna do is have a clamp like this, or any way that you can hold down your handle up here. Okay, so your auger handle is here. And you want to be able to clamp that off. And what that does is that brings the brake off, off of here so you can get your belt out from behind there. Let me see if I can pull this apart. <laughs> All right, so you can... The brake is right here and it's actuated when it's together. It's actually actuated by this little indentation here when you engage the belt. So because we weren't together, it wasn't engaging this. So this brake kind of hangs you up trying to get this off. So you just have to manually push it off. Now I also noticed that this is loose. These should not be loose. All right, we have a couple, it's gonna be really hard to see in there. I'm gonna pull this away so you can see this. I'm gonna show you why that is loose. You have two set screws inside on the collar right down there and you can see the wiggle and jiggle that's why it's loose it's not the bolts on the outside but you get you're gonna have to get yourself a long handled T or a Allen head wrench that'll fit down in there and I have a couple different sizes to see which one it is and we'll try to tighten this up All right, so just gotta get an Allen screw to tight, tighten it up. You can sometimes buy socket sets and you can get an extension to go down in there, tighten them up. Make sure it's tight. Now, no more wiggle. All right, now also you can tell if your bearing's bad inside here by just spinning this. I granted the brakes on, but it's a little bit noisy, but it's not bad. We don't get a ton of snow around this area, so it don't probably go in there for many years. Go back to the belts. This belt was pretty bad right here. You got a really bad spot in it. That's from probably getting stuck in the snow. The auger stopped turning, the, the engine didn't stop spinning. That's why it's real important to uh, make sure that you always see snow coming out your, your, uh, the end of your chute here when you're blowing snow. Now, this has a guard on the outside is pulley, which it was easy for me to take this out, but we should loosen up these guys here, which these are half inch nuts that hold this guide right here onto the engine. All right, so half inch. It's only a quarter inch ratchet. And this one looks like it's got washers on the back side. You gotta be careful you don't lose any, anything here. I just dropped the washer behind it. All right, we'll find, we'll find the washer. It's down in there somewhere. Just wanted to show you guys about taking off this guard here. The other side has a washer also on it. And there's the washer that dropped. And here's the uh, lock nut. So this guide now comes off, all right? try to keep track of everything and actually I saw that this came off this actually gets held in here when you put it back together again and it looks like this had a clip on the end of it that this clip is now missing so we're gonna have to get them back up in here all right so how that works is these are pushed up inside. This one here has it in it. So the other one, this is the one that I lost. This is on the floor. I was wondering where that came from. So that goes there. Actually it broke. So the other piece is right here. All right, so what we have here is we have a broken, broken piece off of, it's supposed to go right there as a clip. All right, so this big nut here is supposed to stay stationary here. So I went to figure something out here. I can probably either tack a weld on it, but that's my scenario, or even a piece of tape the back here is all you needed to do is stay until the bolt goes through the other side. So you can even use some kind of a gooey substance to make it stick just for now until we get it back together again. And uh, that's all you really needed to do is stay there for a, a moment until you get it back in. But back to the belts. We have your transmission dry belt here. 
And this is a spring-loaded arm. And normally, if you're good, you can just take the arm out, hold the arm back, and pull this off the bottom pulley. Like so. Take it off the top pulley. Work it away around. Um, keep in mind, this is very spring-loaded. And you're just gonna work it around that one. And you have the brake system for the here. So I just released the handle so I can get this belt. Now we have one more little obstacle to go. We have a little spot back here with my finger just big enough to get. All right, so we got to take We're going to have to, we, don't, we might almost have to take off that pin to get this off. And it's not coming off. All right, so here's the plan on this. This bracket is in the way of taking off our belt. And a lot of guys will try to pull it through that little teeny spot right there, but what are you gonna do with the, with the new belt? You're not gonna wanna shove it through that little spot, you'll shred the new belt. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this bracket by taking off these two bolts here, and these are 3 8 And that's going to allow us to take off this bracket or maybe even just move it out of the way if I take one off. Okay, so I loosen that up and I'm going to loosen this side up and see if I can twist this possibly out of the way. Uh, we got one on the bottom too. All right, so we have three. All right. So what we're gonna do is loosen up the bottom one. We're gonna take this top one out. And that will give us room to put in our drive belt. Now, a lot of these snow blowers are all gonna be different. This one's a little bit more involved than most. All right, so that just drops out of the way. All right, so we just got that drive belt off. I'm doing a drive belt even though this is not 100% bad, but it's definitely got some years behind it. And since we're getting into it, might as well replace them both at the same time. Got the new belt. I'm gonna put that behind here since we have the bolts out. Back in. And since I got it in there, I'm gonna bolt this back up right away. Some people will opt to take the tire off. Probably make it a little bit easier. All right. Well, I just found out that we forgot to I forgot to put this bar inside here. <laughs> this bar has got to go in here. I was wondering why that was flopping all around right there. This is being a tight thing down this way. Alright, so take that out. So it's got to slide over in here and then we got that on. Okay, now I'm not going to tighten them up 100%. They're going to be just for this video purposes, going to shorten this up a little bit, but just make sure you tighten everything back up again, and then that's back up in there. So you have to get this, you got to get your spring tension off, and then I'm not going to put on the bottom yet because we got to go over the top. So back pulleys, just got to come under, over the top of this one, and then we should be able to just. Pull this pulley back and put your. Okay, so that's gonna be a little, a little harder than I thought. Alright, so there it is. It's a little, it's a little stiff. 
I mean, you could technically have taken this spring off this pulley here. Um, it's hard to, it's actually behind it, but I was able to just push the idler pulley away and hold it away. So now you have your tension on your drive belt. So all you have left to do is your auger belt. Your auger belt's actually gonna attach to the front here. Now I wanna show you that the housing itself has a pivot right here. Okay, it's got little slots. These slots have to go on this bar that comes across. And like I said, some of them are different than others. Now I also have to find the washer that fell behind here. But I'm gonna show you just how you get it back together again. So people who don't lose the washer will be able to get this thing back together, right? Stop going snow. Walking this in, sliding it, it's not that big of a deal. On the pivot, on both sides, before I put the belt on, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna pivot it in once the belt's on. So right now, I'm pretty close. You gotta make sure you're on them. This side here quite isn't, there you go. Sometimes you have a smooth floor you can work with is better. So what we have to do is we have the belt, I'm gonna put it down in here. And you do have that brake I was talking about. So you can physically with your finger, push that brake away. Slide your belt in all the way around. So now I have the belt on here. All right, so what we have to do is this has to go this has to go inside here and I'm just going to show you and I'm going to actually leave this belt on the inside here. I'm going to get it together a little bit more because I don't want to pinch it. I'm using my lift to help me out here because I'm one man doing this. Obviously I'm not in the grooves yet. When you're in the grooves, you're gonna, you'll be able to tell. See now, I have to be on the other side of that. You need to be underneath of it. This is where you need a helping hand. I'm trying to keep these from getting pinched. And I'm just not lined up. So I let it down because I was in a little too far without having the arms up. Once you have it connected, you should be able to lift this up and into its slot just like that. So it's not bad. It took me a little bit to get that on there, but your, your arms that hook up, once you get it hooked in there, you can lift up the whole front end and put it in. Now here's where it gets a little more, more two-handed. You can put a block of wood underneath the front. I'm using my leg to hold it up. And you have to finesse the belt around the big pulley, which I do, and then close it up. It's good to have the bolt ready to get the uh, auger housing back together. All right, so we got that back. Still holding this up. Grab a bolt. This is the side that actually had the nut. It was all right. We're gonna put it in. So you have your belts on, then you have to make sure you put your bracket on like that. You have these two washers, I have to fish my washer out, but you have the two washers, the big washers that fit behind it, they space this out. It's very important that that's spaced correctly. So you get that all bolted back together again, and that it should be it for uh, the adjustments are pretty much, some of these uh, pulleys would slide, this one obviously doesn't. You do have some adjustments that you can make in the back end, but this shouldn't really need them. Just make sure it's operating and having good tension. And you have to make sure that you reinstall your worm gear for your, your housing um, left and right. Now, when I do this, I told you I actually to put that back on. You have to get this adjusted to where it's not too tight and it's not far enough out that it's actually gonna strip the gear. 
and I just basically eyeball it and it looks like you know you have a nice little gap up inside here all right so your teeth if they're too close they grind and then you'll feel that when you turn it if they're too far away it'll strip and then it won't go so it's a fine line I found the other washer here so they have a uh, large washer and a star washer put it under it's a carriage bolt so the top should stay for you it stays inside there and then I usually just line it up by eye in the angle I try to get pretty close and I'm not going to tighten this a hundred percent because I have to take this all apart but then you just try it all right that's pretty good but you definitely have to tighten this up with a ratchet get that tight and uh, you should be good use a little bit of silicone spray on here I know a lot of people like to use oil um, a little bit of oil in this um, will help that a lot through the through time and that's pretty much it and that is how you install a drive belt and an auger belt for an Arians ST824 Thanks for watching.